yeah, I'm not always happy with my creativity and it's not happy with me. But when we come together to use each other's energy and the outside sources around us don't communicate with us, well, creativity and I were like, well, what happened here? We showed up. What about you? And what do you do in situations like that? Creativity is an addiction. Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity, totally uncut because we all make mistakes, but we've got to turn it into a tool. All of us have to turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. I love walking into a Starbucks or even a grocery store and people watch. To see people trying to put together what it is that they want to do in that moment or, or, or they get caught up in a thought and everything in them stops. That has happened a lot over the past 24 months where people just, they just stop. They have to sit down, take a break to breathe. The anxiety level across the globe is through the roof. Try and find yourself a psychotherapist or a psychologist right now. See what kind of a list you're going to be waiting on. There is an answer and the answer will always be with them. But until you get to them, what can you do? Write. Meditate. Do something in your place of mindfulness. Be grateful. Create a grateful journey. I do a defrag journal. I also do my morning pages. Two completely different personalities. But we are in this place. And man, it just doesn't feel like we're escaping this place. That we need to have a mental break. Hey, it's Arrow. This is The Daily Mess, a chronological walk through an everyday world. I am a daily writer. I've been doing this for 28 years, and I, I'm searching for answers just like anybody else. Do I find them? Sometimes. What am I going to do with them if I do have them? I don't know. We grow from them. They're seeds. You put them in the soil, but you make yourself aware of where you're standing by way of being mindful as well as grateful, and you learn to grow from those positions, and that's what The Daily Mess is all about. Tapping into the imagination can be the easiest adventure. Plus, it can also be the craziest of all decisions. See, the goal should be to build some sort of relationship with something completely 100% unseen. What we see is the capability of what it achieves. We don't see eye to eye, the imagination, you and I. No, we don't. When any sort of communication begins, where does the imagination live? Is it in our heart? Does the imagination take up space in our mind? Or is it buried deep into the core of the soul? Now, see, in martial arts, key energy is shaped in your dungeon. You ever heard that term, the dungeon? The dungeon is located right above your pelvic bone. That's your energy maker. According to Google, when it comes to your imagination, it clearly points out that it's living in your brain. It's not one thing, though, but it's a widespread neural network. So I, I go back to the original thought. Tapping into the imagination means getting into that network, learning how to accept the several different layers of something that's completely 100% invisible. Yet, we've got to be able to trust it and use it as a valuable part of growing forward. The imagination. What are you doing to protect it, to love it, to listen to it, to work with it? How often do you find yourself in those positions where everything just turns off? Did your imagination turn off or did the body just not agree with that neural system, that network? Or maybe your imagination was knocking on your heart going, hey, look, I know you got to be here because you told everybody you would be here, but we got to be someplace else. And so all of a sudden in that inner decision of trying to make up your mind, you just stop. I use meditation as a way of really breaking through the barriers. Meditation is, is that one thing that I'll do at one o'clock in the morning. I'll do it at four o'clock in the morning. I'll do it at five o'clock in the afternoon. Meditation is a tool for me to rest the mind. If we don't take the time to rest the mind, then it's going to clog up and you've seen it and you might have experienced it where things just go and you stop. How do I meditate? Well, I use Nidra. Transcendental meditation is brilliant as well. 
but it doesn't happen overnight. You've got to learn how to work with the system. Work with. Don't don't turn it into a science project. Don't make it your religion. Make it your moment. Make it that place that you look forward to where you can just turn off your mind in a place of peace, mindfulness, gratefulness. You don't have to sit with your legs crossed. You don't have to go into a forest to do it. I've done it right here in the studio. At one o'clock in the morning, I'm doing it in my bed. And all of a sudden you go into the meditation and you feel this tremendous amount of pressure no longer on your heart. Learning to be you when you don't want to show up and that you wants to fight you. But you have to be like a martial artist in the way of saying, we weren't trained to be fighters. We were trained to be aware of where the fight might be. And then we're going to walk around it. I'm Errol, and that's The Daily Mess.